like me, you're just plain tired. Um, and it's finally a sunny day outside. Um, I'm going to go outside and collect some vitamin D this afternoon. Um, but um, what I plan to do today and Monday, um, we'll take some kind of review questions over um, confidence intervals. Uh, I will, uh, after class today, um, I have a um, sample free response question from a previous exam. Um, pretty straightforward based on what we've talked about. So it gives you kind of a feel for what you might expect to see in terms of a question from uh, uh, the exam on confidence intervals. Uh, we'll have another one tomorrow. I'm sorry, we'll have another one on Monday. Um, and um, then we'll move, we'll move on to the next topic. I want to make sure we get into hypothesis, hypothesis testing um, and spend a good week there. And then we'll be, we'll be ready for reviews and, and things like that. So we're coming to the end of what I want to share with you to prepare you for the test. Um, and so um, that's good news. And we'll have some time to do some reviews. Um, and by May 22nd, I hope we're all ready, ready to go. Okay, so um, today's review question, I'm just going to take it straight out of the textbook. If you'll turn to uh, page 523, if you don't have your textbook with you right now, that's okay. I'm going to read through it. Uh, and you can you can find it later. Um, page, golly, I think it's five. Yes, page five twenty three, um, and it's uh, question four. Uh, we love football. So um, let me let me read through that real quickly. A recent Gallup poll conducted a telephone interview with a random sample of adults age 15 and uh, I'm sorry, 18 and older. Data were collected for 1,000 people. Of these, 37% said that football was their favorite sport to watch on television. Um, and so the questions are define the parameter P in the setting. Uh, explain to someone who knows no statistics why we can't just say that 30% of all adults would say that football is their favorite sport. Uh, check the conditions for constructing a confidence interval for P and then construct a confident 95% confidence interval and then interpret it in context. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward based on um, what we've been doing this week with regard to um, confidence intervals. Uh, so part A, what is, what's the parameter P that we're looking for? What's the population parameter we're looking for here? Is it all adults? Um, all adults that what? Um, always add the context of the of the question or the case into your answer. It's all adults that would say what? Football is our favorite sport. Yeah, that they would say that would say football is their. Um, um, favorite sport. So the population parameter is the proportion of all adults. Let's be a little bit more specific. The population parameter P is the proportion of all adults age 18 and over that would say um, football is their favorite sport to watch on TV. Okay. Um, so the, the population is all adults. 
but the parameter is the proportion of those adults that would say uh, that football is their sport to watch on TV. Uh, uh, page 523, if, if you're not with us yet, page 523. Uh, and so why can't, after this survey, uh, at 37% say that football is their favorite sport to watch, why can't we say that that is uh, representative of all adults and just say that 37% of people in the U.S. or 37% of adults in the U.S. prefer to watch football? There's different kinds of football. Well, there are. Uh, I'm guessing they're talking about uh, American football. I don't. I don't see any preference for the world definition of football, but yeah, you're right. They're diff different kinds. This is um, only one sample. It's one sample. And so if we took another sample, what would we expect? A different number. We would expect a different number. Now, would we expect it to say that 95% of this sample says they like football? No, but we would expect variation from sample to sample. So um, the reason that we, um, what we would tell somebody who doesn't know much about statistics is that th this is one sample. There is very vari variation associated with every sample while 37% represents the number of people in our sample who identified football as their favorite to watch on TV. Uh, if we took another sample of a thousand people, we would expect a different result just because of the variation in, in samples. Um, um, and um, so I think that's the key thing we're looking for here is that there is always variation sample to sample to sample. Okay, so let's talk about the conditions for constructing a confidence interval for P. There are three of them. Somebody give me one of them. Random. Random. Okay, uh, the good news is this was taken by um, Gallup Poll Organization, and uh, it says they obtained a random sample of adults. Okay, so we can check off, we can check off um, the first one. What's another? Independent. The 10% condition is met. Uh, know that... Um, there are way more than 10 times a thousand or 10,000 adults in the U.S. So it's small compared to the population. And then the third one has to do with the shape of our sampling distribution. And what's that? Normal. Uh, what now? Normal. Is it normal? That's true. Yeah. We, how, and how do we check for a sample proportion? How do we check? see if that sampling distribution is normally distributed. There are two things we have to do. N times P and N times 1 minus P. Yeah, N times P and N times 1 minus P both have to be, both of them have to be greater than 10. And um, I think we can we can safely say that uh, if N is 1,000 and P is 0.37, then 1,000 times 0.37 is going to be way more than 10. And so 1 minus P would be 0.63, and 1,000 times that is going to be greater than 10. So um, for Part B, the conditions for inference are met. And uh, we can go ahead and construct a 95% um, a confidence interval. And here I'll just, uh, I'll share the screen. I'll, um, I'll walk through that one. Um, just using the document camera here. 
Um, there we go. Okay, so uh, let me make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so where's the top? Here we go. Okay, so uh, a confidence interval starts with an estimate, point estimator, which in this case is our sample proportion from our sample of a thousand people, uh, plus or minus a critical value uh, times the uh, standard error, or in this case, the standard deviation of the statistic, okay? So um, I'm gonna fill this in with, sample, uh, with symbols now. So our estimate is P hat uh, plus or minus our critical value here. This is a one sample test. So we're just gonna use Z star times the standard deviation which is for a sample proportion, it's p hat times one minus p hat over n and the square root of all of that. Okay, so in some symbolic form, that's how we're going to construct our sample. So now we're gonna plug in, uh, gonna plug in our values, p hat was 0.37. 0.37 plus or minus Z star here with 95% um, confidence. 95% confidence level says that Z star from table A is 1.96. Okay, so if we were to go look that up in table A, uh, we would find that that's 1.96 multiply that by the square root of 0.37 times 0.63 all over a thousand. Um, and um, let's see. I don't think I need to give an intermediate result. I think you guys can take your calculator and um, go through that, we get a confidence interval of 0.34 to 0.40. So, um, oops, I don't know why that's so bright right there. Um, but that's it. That's the, that's the basics of doing a um, confidence interval calculation. Uh, I really think the hardest part of all of this is just making sure the um, conditions for inference are met. And um, if, uh, if the question doesn't specifically call out that, conventions for inference are met or doesn't specifically ask you to do that, then you need to do it. You need to remember to do it. Don't just jump right in and calculate um, uh, calculate your, your confidence interval. Make sure that they are uh, met before you do your calculation. And, and quite honestly, um, in the heat of the moment, in the pressure of, of a time test, if they don't ask you specifically, then you're likely to forget. And if you do forget, um, all you really need to do is when you realize, oh, I need to add this, just add it at the bottom and draw an arrow and bring it back up to wherever it should be. And, and the reader will uh, recognize that you knew you needed to do it and you did it and you'll get credit for it. Don't erase anything. Um, just, just do it off to the side, um, or at the bottom of the page and draw a box around it and, and, you know, just bring an arrow up above it or whatever you need to do just to indicate, Hey, I, I, I know I need to do this and here's the work and you'll get credit for it. It doesn't, uh, the reader understands what it's, what it's like to take a, a pressure test, a high stakes test under time conditions. 
And uh, so if you forget a step or you forget something like that, just add it at the bottom and make a note, draw an arrow, and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Okay, and so um, the last part of this is to interpret the interval in context. Um, I'm going to ask any of you guys, do you want to – you want to take a chance on that and interpret that, um, interpret that in context um, for us. Okay. Well, um, I'll just write it out here um, so that you'll get an idea. Um, and have something to go back to later, uh, a simple interpretation. We are 95% confident that the true proportion of uh, U.S. adults who would say their favorite sport to watch on TV is football lies between point three four and Point four zero, um, or something like that. Let me get that in the screen where you can see it a little bit better. There we go. Um, we're 95% confident that the true port proportion of U.S. adults who would say their favorite sport to watch, um, I forgot sport, their favorite sport to watch on TV watch on TV is football lies between 0.34 and 0.40. Um, another way to say it, we're 95% confident that the interval between 0.34 and 0.40 contains the true proportion of U.S. adults uh, who would say their favorite sport to watch is football. There are several ways to to, you know, to bring in the context, but the main things that we're going to be looking for is you have to restate the level of confidence. You have to state the interval and then you have to include, you have to include the context of the question. Um, uh, you just can't, you just can't say, the the level the confidence interval is 0.34 to 40 and leave it at that you've got to restate it in terms of of um uh the context of the question okay let's turn that off okay um any questions? Uh, I, the question, the the free response question I'll be sending you is very, very similar to this one in terms of its scope. Um, and um, you're going to calculate a confidence interval for a sample proportion and a couple of questions about interpretation and another, another interpret. There's a two part question, but um, uh, I think the I think it'll be fair based on what we've talked about so far. Okay. Um, like I said, uh, it's Friday. Uh, we've had some long sessions this week. I appreciate your patience. I'm going to give some of that time back to you today and and um, get off here unless y'all have questions. Guys, again, I thank you for your faithfulness, and um, uh, I hope I hope you helping, and I hope you feel good about what we're doing. Trying to lead you down a path that'll get you two or three or a four or a five on the test coming up here in a few weeks.
Okay. Well, uh, if nothing else, I'll sign off. We'll, uh, we'll